I was actually broken up with a lot because men got a little bit competitive with me. But that's sort of what I love the most about Ed is he's never been intimidated. He's always been so supportive and just amazing. And I think that's why we connected because we could have a protein shake and some poached chicken and like really be happy with that. Hello, I'm Ali Datto. I'm Cam Datto. Welcome to Separate Bathrooms. We would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay our respects to the elders both past and present. We got a show. We sure do. We got a show. Ed Cavalli. He's a very busy comedian. You might know him from Have You Been Paying Attention, Dancing with the Stars, or on radio with Husey and Aaron. He also has his own podcast, Team Effort, not to mention being a co-author with his son, Arnold. I know. And Tiffany, his wife, well, she is a powerhouse with over 231,000 followers on Instagram because she's so awesome. She is a six Dan black belt in Taekwondo. She's a personal trainer. She's an author. She's a journalist and a television personality. She's best known from her appearances on Gladiators, Mm. Uh, the Morning Show, The Circle, The Biggest Loser Australia. Ed and Tiff have two children, Arnold and Vader. Let's uh, let's find out more about these two. Welcome to the bathroom, Ed Cavalli and his amazing wife, Tiffany Hall. Welcome, Tiffany and Ed, to the bathroom. How are you both? Very well. Thank you for having us. Yeah, great to be here. Thank you, uh, Cam Alley. Love you, to, uh, love you to be a part of the show. I'm, I'm sorry we're not all in the same room. It's like we're all in our own separate bathroom today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. But, you know, I know we're probably going to get into it, but this uh, this building and this the floor of the building we're on plays a key part in uh, Tiff and I's relationship, actually. <gasps> so it's, quite, okay. it's, it's a bit of full circle action. Oh. Better do, do tell, do tell. Is well, this Tiff- is this your meeting story? Because we were going to ask you about that no, anyway. It, mo- it most certainly it is. is. Tiff, can you, do you know, Love uh, it. can you describe... Yes, I remember. I do remember. It was years and years and years ago, like 15 years ago, and I had just come off the show Gladiators where I was being a gladiator and I came into the Nova Studios to be interviewed by Ed Cavalli and he kept asking me back to Breakfast Radio to have interviews over and over again. And finally, I just said to him, I'm so sick of getting up early to do these silly interviews. Will you just take me out to dinner already? (laughs) (laughs) And I gave him my number and said, please, just call me. It's easier. That's so great. And, I mean, Ed, what was it for you about Tiffany that you made you want to keep calling her back into the studio besides the fact she was probably highly intelligent and a great guest? Well, you've buried the lead there, Ali, because because uh, Cam, of course, uh, <laughs> you of course are uh, probably part of the Seven Network at that time as well. And uh, I remember that, that Gladiators was on, and Tiff played Angel, which was the the, the little one. I had my eye on Vulcan, but he rejected oh. me. And then I uh, and then I I remember I went and I interviewed Tiff on the set of Gladiators. Cam, this is the thing. I'm probably sure you've went through something similar, and she doesn't remember the first time we met. We actually mm-hmm. met on. Set when I interviewed her, but she had no recollection of that. So I kept asking her to come in and do interviews on the radio, and the the exact phrase was, "I when he I are we going to go out to dinner or what?" And then the Channel Seven publicist, <laughs> the poor things who'd been dragging dragging her in, Ali said, "Yes, please. We've got other shows we need to get to. Can you just end this?" So that's how. So that's <laughs> so that so that. <laughs> So that's that's how it started. And, and Cam, I'm, I'm interested to get your opinion on this because when Tiff gave me her number, I, I actually rang. I physically rang, and she still saved in my phone as Tiff Angel. Uh, mm. But I, I didn't text. I didn't, you know, just send an unsolicited uh, picture, you know, cr- cricketer style. I just actually picked up the phone and and made a phone call, Cam. Which I, I and I'm sure you've you, you that's your that's your line of work as well, is it not? You're a call guy, aren't you? Oh, I, I actually am because because I'm a luddite, mate, and that's that's where it all. I mean, this is we're talking back in 1990 when Ali and I cooked up or, or hooked up, and um, we, we had a cook up later on. But um, yeah. no, is there was no that, technology you, around. Cam, is it true that you wrote a letter into uh, one of the magazines, Dolly, that uh, Ali was on the cover of, asking for her number <laughs> anonymously? 
<laughs> it could very well have been me. And I, uh, that's a great story, though. And why let the truth get in the way of that one? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah. It ac- actually, what did happen was I was walking through the halls of Hol- uh, the halls of Dolly, rather the halls of Holly. Who's Holly? The halls of Dolly. Ooh. And and there was there was Ali's photograph on the wall. And I said to the lady who I was walking with, I said. That's Alison Bray, and she said, "Do you want to meet her?" And I said, "Absolutely." So <laughs> that's how that all that's how wow. that all came about. I mean, I felt like a bit of a rock star that I could look at a picture on a wall and say, "Yeah, I get to but meet that, her." Sorry to jump in, but that's David Bowie's story as well. He was watching television, uh, Ali, and saw his wife on a commercial, and said, "Can I please meet her?" And that's how that's how they got together. And then uh, I know that uh, the you know the call on me that Eric Pert's uh, sound uh, film clip, which has a you know the um, the the people doing uh, the what is it uh, tips like aerobics, yes. the really hot ladies doing aerobics. I know that a very famous uh, musician called and said, I'm, "We have the I'm on the label that this guy's on. Can you please introduce me?" She's Australian, that's why I know this story. The lead uh, aerobics dancer in that uh, in this film clip, and I can tell you that that international music star and that Australian uh, dancer had a very meaningful one night relationship. It was a, <laughs> it's a beautiful story. <laughs> and I'm glad you told it. Well, you, saw me on, you saw me on TV and you said to your housemate at the time, I'm going to marry Angel. See, you've changed this story <gasps> to suit your own purposes. He said it to me. My friend who oh. I was living with who was a very hot model by the, an actor by the name of Christian Clark, Sydney's most handsome Christian. man. Yeah. And as I was, uh, I was walking past the television and and I was glued to gladiators, obviously. And he had a BlackBerry. That's how you know how long ago it was, Ali. And he yeah. looked up from his black. He looked up from his BlackBerry, and he said, "You'll marry her." And that was. <laughs> oh uh, my god! Yeah, yeah. He's a soothsayer. Did Did he tell you anything else? <laughs> yeah, he did, but none of it's fit for broadcast. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and so Tiff, how about you? What what was it about Ed that you were like, "Come on, mate, let's go, let's have a dinner date"? Uh, he was funny. He made me laugh yeah. and he yeah. was very direct and, you know, I, I loved that he was just so engaged and, I don't know, he just, and he was so tall and I just have this thing for big nose weirdos mm, and it excited. just, he just fit the brief. He just was. It's me and Wilbur Wilde. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just <laughs> loved him. Yeah, I found him so interesting. Oh, I love that. So, uh, so what's the engagement story, guys, or the marriage? Take us through that. Was there anything oh, fun there, or how the did... engagement? Yeah. Well, mm. we were, uh, we, we were sort of living in LA at the time. Ed was doing a little pilot season over there, and I had we had been together for years and years and years, and I just was the jack of it, and I said, "We're getting engaged." No. No. Yes. I need, no. What happened was, once again, <laughs> Christian Clark was involved. We were at the Equinox in West Hollywood. Now, no, at will. the gym that day was the line. This is the lineup on a Wednesday morning at Equinox West Hollywood, if you're Fabulous. interested. Yeah. What Fabio, year was this? Cameron D. Uh, 2000 and... Oh, 10. 10, possibly. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking. Um, it was, so Fabio, Dave Navarro, Cameron Diaz, mm-hmm. half of the cast of Entourage, but not the famous ones, and uh, The Rock doing shoulder press. And we finished at the gym, and I was talking to my mates, the Ash and my mate Christian. I was like, how good was that? How good was that? And Tiff goes, let's go somewhere. I go, where? She goes, so we're just going somewhere. I said, all right. And so we went down, Ali, uh, down sort of round in a corner. And then I'm like, there's a lot of shops here. I'm not into shops. And we went into this place and it's not, it's, it's, it just had the word Jean written on the, on, in a- Jean so, Doucet. Jean Doucet. And Ali, uh, uh, you'll know better than me. What's a, you know, when people write things in a cursive letters, but in iron, whatever that's called, you know, a joint's classy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's a classy yeah, got joint. It, got it. I'm with you. Iron yeah. letters. And the, and the yeah. numbers are spelled in letters as well. And so we went in there and I'm like, what on earth is this? joint and Cam you go down this long and I kid you not we go down this long hallway red carpet, red carpet and a really handsome Frenchman locked he locked, locked a us sec- in. he locked a security door behind us I still don't know what we're doing here I'm like oh no colonics LA's finally got us and as we <laughs> <laughs> and we sit down, I sit down and I go, what are we doing here? And the man, John, do you remember what he did then? What was the first thing John did? I can't remember. He pointed at the wall and he said, do you know who that is? Oh, his grandfather. Yes. He goes, that is my grandfather, Cartier, the original Cartier. <gasps> and that's when it hit me. I was like, 
This is a ring shop, isn't We're it? We're ring shopping <laughs> with Cartier's grandson, Jean. <laughs> well, well pulled off, Tiff. Well done. Yeah, yeah. and he then presented a couple of diamonds and we made a nice ring and we took it home. And then I didn't know when he was going to propose and I thought yeah. it would be elaborate, like dinner or something no, really special. No, but what did special. I use in the meantime? Was, um, Cam, I've never had more sway in the relationship than in that gap between a, a t- a having the ring but before you've presented it. What was it called? <laughs> I can't remember. Mate, it was called the Ring Appreciation Society, right? Where basically <laughs> was, it was RAS for short, right? Every time I felt that she was doing something that oh, that's where right. she appreciated me, Ali, or that I was good, I would say, well, that's a good point for the RAS. And then if, there, if we had a fight or something, I'd say, ooh, the RAS, that's a, that's, a, that's a cross. That ring's getting far away. And so that was going on for a while. And then finally one day we went out for dinner. Mm. At a nice restaurant. It but, was lovely. But what stopped us? Do you remember what stopped me giving it to you? At Someone that? recognized you, you or me, yeah. A, a man left a date he was on to come over and tell Tiff how much he loved her on <laughs> Gladiators and The Biggest Loser. And That's I was right. like, well, you can leave with him because I'm not giving a ring after that performance. <laughs> that was a bit much, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a bit much. Yes. He laid it on very thick. And then when we got home. We got home and Ed said, quick, put your pajamas on. And I was like, what? Why? And then he was in his PJs and he just popped the question on bended knee, which was really beautiful. But we were at your parents' house. because we, At my parents' house. We were house. bought a house, but they we were, were still there cl- we, we cleaning just or something. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Mm. I was like in between settlement alley. We'd bought this place. So we're living at Tiff's parents. Mm. And so it, we, I, so in the upstairs bathroom, just got, you know, proposed. And then <laughs> yeah. we just went downstairs and had a Viennetta. It was a lovely evening. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. So are you in Australia now or are you Yeah, in, we're back in Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah, back yeah. in Australia. Yeah. So you've, LA was a long way away from there. No, so Tiff gave me a really good ultimatum. So he was like, look. This is a this is a fifteen year slog if you're going to do it, but you know, no, thank you. Let's and no, uh, but you you got offered a role as a oh, ninja turtle. Right. Yes, and Sorry. which yes. ninja turtle? The purple one, Donatello. Donatello, but yes. you what? weren't going to see your face, yes. and you're going to be in a massive ninja turtle suit. Yes. And I just right. didn't see the point of doing this role if yes. you couldn't see your face. Yes, and so Whoa. I'm like, and then you got the gig with Have You Been That's Paying right. Attention? And then Working and Dog rang and said, Have yeah. You Been Paying Attention? It's been commissioned. And come I home. That and would I be we probably a smart move. A smarter move. Yeah. Oh my! So you you <laughs> for you you for gone or you you for got an a, a a role where you're running around in a black room, big studio sta- mm. sound stage in Los Angeles, covered in purple balls. Mm. You know, with three other blokes as a mm. ninja turtle yes. to come back and work with Sam Pang and the gang. Yeah, I know. And that, since you say it like that, it's actually very similar. We all have the uh, the balls strapped to us during. Have you been paying attention? And they put our <laughs> they put our they put our faces in later because Sam's got a lot of really offensive facial tattoos that they have to edit out. <laughs> Ed, your wife is an absolute superstar, fiend of exercise and strong as an ox. Was that ever something that you were daunted by as a as a fellow? I mean, some some men might might have felt a little daunted by how incredibly beautiful and strong she is. I'm not, but other people are. And I and I never forget. So there was one time we were out. And Tiff uh, was looking gorgeous, as she does, and I was dressed as myself. Um, <laughs> where you go, if people need to describe my look, people say that, you know, men get a look and just stick with it. So, Cam, my <laughs> look, if people, and you guys will both know this, is uh, sort of street hoodlum, Bondi Junction, 94 to 96. Those, That's the area. That's <laughs> yeah. basically where <laughs> Absolutely. I... Absolutely. <laughs> a bum bag. <laughs> bum bag over the shoulder. Socks yeah. pulled up. Socks pulled and up. Gym shorts. And, 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 so and a hoodie. There's your bum bag. And, yeah, and you've got your hoodie, hoodie. on. Yeah, Always hoodie, a hoodie. long jacket. Yeah. Pair of Air Max, that's my go. And we were wandering along, uh, Ali, and Tiff was looking great, and a guy in a van, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to swear, I promise this, how we were wandering along, and a man in the van slowed down to look at Tiff, which is fair enough, and then he saw me, and he said, you are f- kidding me. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm trying to yell oh my, my credits God. as he went. I've done pizza ads. I've, I've been on <laughs> Red mate, Rooster. Red Rooster ads, mate. <laughs> but he'd gone. So, so is this is this also known as you are punching? 
Yeah, and look, yes, but I, I look, yes, yeah. yeah, basically, yeah. It's just it's a it's a familiar tale, but otherwise, Cam, why would we? Why else would we have gone into showbiz? Tiffany, <gasps> how has it been for you? Have you found that in other other relationships with fellas before you met Ed, which was, yeah. you know, a long time ago, were, were were those dudes intimidated by what you were bringing? Yeah, actually, I was actually broken up with a lot because I mm. men got a little bit competitive with me. I had one guy. And I quite liked him, but I was very strong and he would try and challenge me, like, how many burpees can you do? And I'd, like, beat him and then I'd be like, do we have to play these games? And then eventually he just said, I can't hack it, and he was out of there. So it it was a little bit much, but that's sort of what I love the most about Ed is he's he's never been intimidated. He's always been so supportive and just amazing and he's so fit in himself i mean he was on the cover of men's health magazine last year he looked incredible and he his own health and fitness is so important to him i think that's why we connected because we could have a protein shake and some poached chicken and like really be happy with that yeah. um Jesus. <laughs> how sad is that tragic but, tragic. but, 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 but it was but, fabulous can yeah, i ask you if you it, bo- was, if- it was a dream come true for both of us we were like oh this is just so comfy and if you're both ingesting all that protein powder i mean see, the, the bathroom <laughs> yeah. the farts must be yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Sticks wow. the bathroom out. Wow. That's for sure. <laughs> Tiff, you oh, write on your. I love that you wrote this. Um, I, I'll pull this off your Instagram. You mm. said, um, "Taekwondo has been an integral part of my family for generations. My parents taught me throughout my childhood, mm. all the way to sixth dan black belt. That's incredible." And it's been so important in shaping who I am and the values I take into life, from discipline to improving focus, learning how to focus on the things that are important to me and learning how to quieten my mind. It's been like a form of moody, moving meditation. Mm. Can you tell us more about your parents and why did they teach you martial arts? Yes. Well, they were they were one of the first to start a taekwondo school in australia just taekwondo um a full-time facility and i'm talking 1984 and they opened that the the year i was born so i grew up in their little dojo kicking punching and watching my parents teach martial arts they were fitness instructors as well and I just developed this huge love and passion for teaching martial arts and um, teaching people fitness and seeing the confidence that they imbued in other people and especially in children and I just loved it. And um, Ed's actually the only member of my family to not have a black belt. The Whatever. only member. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. You can buy it, Ed. Whatever. You can go, you can go and he won't, to he, he David does Jones and get one. <laughs> exactly yeah. right. Well, no, look, and look, you got so Tiff's parents also too. They met in uh, in they, uh, as, they a, met. as as Tiff's father describes it. Um, uh, our hands touched when we were nine years old, and there was electricity, and we're still together. So <laughs> yeah, they, they met at school. They met in primary school. They've wow. been together yeah, for forever and ever yeah. and ever. Uh, and so you know they 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 are a very. You see that a lot in Tiff and her siblings that a. Uh, a family, a de- sorry, a very, very strong sort of family unit is very, very important to them, and I, th- you know, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to have married into, if you know what I mean. It's mm. a uh, yeah, totally. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No, and nice. you guys have kids. How yeah. many kids mm-hmm. do you have? We have two. We have Arnold. He's five, and we yep. have Vader. She's nearly one. Okay. <laughs> now, is is Taekwondo in their future? Do you feel? Ed, yes. Do you want them to do that? So I take Arnie. So Arnie goes, and I'll go, and you can sort of go in and do it with him. And mm. um, so he's he started that, which is beautiful because sometimes his grandfather teaches him mm. uh, Taekwondo. So that's a nice that's a nice Amazing. link. Yeah. And then the other day, the first time ever, one of the kids in the class gets a black belt for outstanding sort of effort. And Arnie got that, and he was so proud of himself and so happy. And it was a uh, so he, he I'm seeing now through him what a difference it can make. Uh, for kids as well in terms of confidence and self-defense and all that. It's, it's just anti-bullying. Anti-bullying. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's, and the program yeah. is something that Tiff's father and mother have developed over the over the long time they've done it. And, it, yeah, it's a it's an absolute winner. It's a, it's it's so it's good. It's so much fun. Yeah. It's just I just love the sport. I just love it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's also great for resilience too, isn't it, for the kids? Yeah, it really is. And we're seeing that now with Arnold. He's first year at school this year and yeah. he's trying to navigate the playground and there's a lot of not bullying but rough 
play and he doesn't mm. know how to deal with it and it keeps going back to his taekwondo and, you know, learning to use his voice and speak up and say, hey, I don't like it, stop it, I'm mm. going to tell the teacher. Using your voice is a really important part of that, having the confidence to speak up. So yeah. I- I'm, seeing, I'm seeing the results. It's pretty cool. And you'll have your daughter go into it as well? Oh, I would love Vader to do it. I mean, yeah. Arnie does footy and soccer and he he's doing other things as well. And if Vader wants to do ballet or whatever, she can. Uh, but I, I'd love to just expose her to it and see if she yep. takes an interest uh, like I did. I, I found it was really cool. You, you went along with it, but your sister... My sister w- didn't she did as it, much. Yeah, she went more down the... Yeah, you know, she, she liked sort of ballet sort of, and yeah. dancing so and stuff, we never and know. that's we don't fine. Know it's hard to make them do things when they really don't want to do it. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And trying to goad them with dark chocolate treats and stuff like that. Yes. <laughs> oh, I know. It's just like, oh, it only so goes little. so far, right? Eddie? I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> got all that ahead of us uh, yeah i know yeah i know but it is a you, you know pretty early on what they're going to want to do and what they're not i'm sort of learning that now mm. but uh, you know arnold's five and he has a very pretty good sense of the things he likes and the things he doesn't you just sort of keep offering them it's like i i i, I, I liken it to yumcha with the trolleys going past where mm-hmm. you just continuously or a sushi train where you continually just offering hey how about taekwondo hey how about uh, <laughs> how about this how about yeah. that and he'll pick, pick it have a taste if he likes it he likes it if he doesn't wait yeah, you, you know something okay. like, i only got one rule cam i only got one rule you know what my one rule is for these kids What's footy. the one rule? Footy. No Play sh- footy. N- no showbiz. No, <laughs> no showbiz. showbiz, everybody. Oh, We're going to okay. be useful members of society. No showbiz. <laughs> okay, he so- loves dressing up, though. He loves I mean, costumes and yeah. acting. He's so your son. I mean, he doesn't yeah. stand so a son. chance. You're on TV. Both no. of you are on no TV and having showbiz. so much fun. You're so good at it. The no, both no. of you showbiz. are so... How, but, okay, so... <laughs> So what are the pitfalls of showbiz then? I'm curious that you've perceived. All right. So I think I think that it's changed somewhat, mm-hmm. right? Obviously it has, Cam. And you, you know, Ali, you would attest to that. But also, I look, obviously we'll see what they can do whatever they want with their lives. But that the, the worry about the next gig, the next gig, the next gig, mm-hmm. or the opposite of that, which is the online version now, which is the how many clicks did that get, how many likes did that mm-hmm. get, mm-hmm. how many That's subscribers. World, yes. Yeah. yeah, well, Tiff, you yeah. live, you know, yeah. you're a big part of this. I'm just seeing it like even in younger people I know sort of coming up in the, in, sort of in the industry now, the algorithm decides your career a lot mm-hmm. of the time. You don't know why YouTube decides to put you on the front page. or I've, I've had people tell me, Cam, I don't know what happened, and and literally ring, try and ring someone at TikTok. I mean, they don't have a phone, um, <laughs> and so they and say, what happened? My videos were getting all these things. Now you've taken me out of the algorithm. I can't sell any tickets. I can't this. I can't that. And mm. and I just think there's there's, I just feel as though it's never been easier, but it's also never been harder, and it's ever, it's never yeah. been less rewarding at the same time. Yes, it's, in that okay. cool. in that in in that current in that currency, if you know what I'm saying. Mm-mm. Mm. Um, but having said that, you know, whatever. If he, if he or she comes he wants up, to be a comedian, whatever, whatever, yeah. they can do what they like. But I just think there's the pressure. Is I see it. I see it in young, younger folks than myself. I see. It, I they. I mean, I live with it, but we all do. But it's very like it can be crushing for them if they yeah. think they're doing great stuff and no one cares. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, if they, if they, if your kids take, uh, if they take anything away from you, to it would be your creativity, and you can apply that creativity into a whole different you know, plethora of different yeah. areas. There you go. You know. yes. Absolutely. But we'll soon find out. be great. Mm. Yeah, but, I, but I, the, yeah, that, take a point. And the amount of statistics that are, that are keep coming out now as we're seeing, you know, um, a longer period of time of kids being raised on screens, we're seeing the yep. detriment of that. We're seeing the mm-hmm. detriment of TikTok and Instagram and the likes <laughs> and what it's doing to our brain, what it's doing to our... To yep. our creativity, really. And then and you've also, got the AI coming in. I just exactly. think it's... Oh, my goodness. We're really the, swinging yeah, it the wrong way. That's right. Yeah. And here's one thing, the TikTok thing. It, it, look, I, I know, whatever, good luck to them if they sponsor the show or whatever. It, but it, <laughs> they've taken away the uh, the one thing that which was the trade. The trade was you give us your talent or your whatever you do, and in return you will receive attention and money. And TikTok have removed the money part. Mm, so you nice. ask these TikTok people... Okay, maybe they can parlay it into something or this, like that, that, whatever. But most of the time, you can't. Almost, yeah. almost zero of You're them. You're just get... trying to convert them to another platform like YouTube or Instagram, yeah, but, so it's just converting. Yeah, but I don't know. I just, I, I don't think it's long for this world because at some point, people are going to go, "Hang on a sec, what the, what am I doing this for? There's not, yeah, there's, what's coming back it. my way?" 
Do you two work out together? No. No, we, that's no. the only rule God, in our no. marriage. We really? never, ever go to a gym. We have separate gym memberships at separate gyms, completely yeah. separate. Yeah. And uh, I'm not allowed to coach him. I'm not allowed to give him any technical advice. I'm not yep. allowed to go near him. And even if I say to him, say we're traveling together and there's a hotel gym and we end up in the hotel gym together and I'm just like, yeah, you could do one extra pull up or, you know, you could really push it for another hey, two Hey, that's reps. not how you say it. You know, um, <laughs> he okay, just now, doesn't now take it choice. on. Yeah. I don't say like They're give not, me two more, more pull ups. No, or- you go like this. So we're in a we had a fight once. We're on our honeymoon in Paris, uh, and uh, there was a ho- you know, hotel gym. We're off for a, <laughs> we're off to have a hundred croissants, but we thought, oh, I'll have a little work. We, we enjoy it. Have a little exercise yeah. in in the morning, in the hotel gym. I never forget it. We're in the hotel gym. It's only a honeymoon, mind you. You know, hunt it. And I was doing uh, an exercise, and uh, I put the weights down. I felt pretty good. And and Tiff was doing. Uh, she was under a one thousandth burpee, and she <laughs> just turned to me and she goes, "Is that it?" I was like, right, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I don't need this. Don't you were both. No, nah, we just You were don't. both on the cover of of the yeah. Sports Illustrated or whatever that was yeah, last the year at the same bag, time. Yeah. 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 Well, that was that's, the deal, wasn't it, Tiv? Because they. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we were, but I was the first pregnant woman in history, so mm. I was eating oh. like banana bread and treats and all these things on set, and Ed was like having. Steamed chicken. I had half a jelly bean and an espresso. Yes. And, oh. and then... <laughs> it was a funny shoot. <laughs> mind you, that... Uh, I that, couldn't stop eating. <laughs> <laughs> that magazine's that magazine's no longer with us, and I like to think it was me that killed it. <laughs> Is that they, you know, they've had Hemsworth, they've had every hunk you've ever seen in your life on the cover, and people you are walking... fantastic. People walking past the newsstand, and they're going, what a big, what's that big nose weirdo doing on there? That's it. <laughs> That's it. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> what was a good idea, though, mate, because you kind of inspired me dancing with the stars i i watched you do that a, a couple of years before i had a crack last year or now, whatever it was I and you were fabulous up. now yeah. i meant to bring that up earlier because a you were wonderful lovely top line they didn't say that to you enough your ballroom was actually very very nice your, your, your hips are your hips lacked rotation but uh who can't say that but no. but you my friend i should have messaged you because i did think because you're tall like like i am Correct. and there is no tall there's no one, no ballroom dancer, no or no no one over six foot that ballroom dances because it's 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 not meant like that because it was invented alley in Vienna when everyone was five foot one. If you yeah. guys have been to the palace at Versailles, it's it's like a Lego house. It's ridiculous, <laughs> yes. right? So that's what it was invented for. So no one over six foot can can do any ballroom dancing. But Cam, you were you did an, I should have told you that earlier. You did an excellent job. But I could see you counting when you were doing it. I could see your mouth. No, I could see your mouth moving as you were trying to stay in the count, which is what the dancer always tells you to do. Stay in the count. Stay in the count. So I could see your, you were like mouthing one, two. Yeah, I could see you counting. Yeah. It was like, it's like being on stage with someone who's saying your lines, mouthing yeah. your lines <laughs> yeah. at you, waiting for their <laughs> turn to speak. Mouthing your lines. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're right, and 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 uh, you know Megan, who was my partner, is no, she's not. Great. Yeah, she's a fabulous girl. She's five foot yeah. two against yeah, six foot tiny. three. Yes, you know, mm. and, she's tiny. and and but what I was going to say was. Thank you for those comments because I, I, it really cut me that one <laughs> that I was cut on the first night because I, Millsy's looking at me going, you were robbed. That's yeah, ridiculous. You were robbed. I, I won't get into any of that, but thanks for the- Because he's I, still better. I'm, That's why I'm we're still not going there. Mate, <laughs> mate, I came forth and I still bang on. Listen to me. Yes. I'm still banging on about it. He's never got I, over yeah. it. No, listen. I was, by any met you asked Tristan McManus and that English bloke, who got the bloke who pretends to be English who's from Dubbo, you asked either <laughs> of them, right? And they will- and they will tell you, as is, I saw him on the, he's like a nice bloke, I can't, can't remember his name. Point being, both robbed. And when that Ali and Tiff, when you do it, you can, no, you can fly I the flag for us, you know? I can't do it. Well, so here's the thing. Ali and I, this is what, what was great about it for, for me, was that I was able to take Al and we did some private dance lessons together. Uh-huh. And it was really fun. Do you guys do that? Do you do anything like that together where you, you know, it's not, obviously you're not working out together, but, but what do you, do you do some dancing? Cause you were great, mate. Hmm. I would have loved to. And I begged him to practice with me during that time. That's but right. again, he refused to dance with me. Cause it's like playing alley. It's like playing tennis against someone who's worse than you. You get worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're practicing for a competition. 
Yeah, right. and us, I understood that. Some of us are professional ballroom dancers. Yeah. Others are kitchen <laughs> amateurs. I ain't got time for that. I was in the kitchen saying, come on. Yeah. Eat, come on. Nah. No dice. Show me how to do it. Show me how to yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't really, we haven't We haven't done any dancing or tango or, no, I would mm. love to. Do you know what? Now that, well, I, uh, yeah. Hmm. I was yeah. going to say, is there anything that the two of you, like I'm always try to find something that Cam and I have not ever done together because he's done a lot of stuff. He's traveled to a lot of places and 32 years together, it's a long time to try and have a first That's off. Smart. Yeah. Do you have? Do you learn things? Is there anything that you've learnt together that both of you are brand new at? Hmm. I don't think so. I guess parenting. parenting. Yeah, no, but, parent. But, but, I but. think with <laughs> because our kids are so little, it's just been such a a fog of nappy changes and yeah. little people and survival mode. To be honest, yeah. Yeah. And, and also the new normal of us being Ed and Tiff, which we were for so many years, and then being parents and watching each other be parents and finding the new normal of just feeling so friggin' tired all the time. And right. yeah. um, it's survival mode, especially with Vader. Like, she's only, she's only 11 months, so Aww. going from no kids to one kid is a big step, but going mm. from one kid to two kids is a big step as well. And yep. If I was going to yeah. give you guys one note for this show, mm. what it would be <laughs> is that... <laughs> If only one is that because you've been together thirty two years, and I recently listened to your episode where you went to Scotland as a family. Yep. And Cam, you were mentioning the fact that uh, a lot of the feedback you were getting was to Ali saying, "How did you book it? How did you this? How mm. did you that?" Right? Which mm. I found very very interesting. I think, and only because you're, you're both too humble, you two have earned the right. Yes. Thirty two years in. Yeah. To lay down a bit of, this is what we did. And this it worked. worked. So yeah. just then you said, you, Ali, you've been looking for new things for, I know you often, you know, you defer to your guests, which is great, but you two have got the 32 years under the belt. You two have earned the right to do the, like just what you said then, we look for new things to be first time together. We so should do that, you can Ed. do you can take that or leave it, but that you two, I know it's probably because you're trying to be too humble, but you've earned that right and that's good stuff. Got it. I love it. That's the good oil. Well, we do. That's why we started the podcast because it was, we were getting projections at us going, it's oh, 32 years, couple goals. You mm. guys are yeah. this and you guys yeah. are that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. You know, there's been a lot of water that's passed under the bridge, a lot of mistakes made, a lot of good things too, you know. So mm. we thought, we'll come on here and lay it out and see how we but go. I reckon so, you can pump more good things. I reckon there's, because right. uh, the, that's the Because we just learned something there. Yeah. We have to go and yeah, do something a, new. Exactly. And anytime I listen to the white show, water there's rafting. always a little so, white water rafting. I don't know. <laughs> that's something your first fun. Thought, your first thought was that's white water rafting. The first thing that came to my white head was, rafting. I would love to do white water rafting. That's and a good bit for this show. You can do it with every couple. All right, on the count of three, Say our first time thing, but you that hate you, both, you hate that that you could you? both think of for the first time. That's a good bit. But you, that you would hate. I like, love that. Hang on, Cam's writing that down. That's a good I, bit. I'm actually, I'm actually writing down. The, yes, the, I've it's had the, it the yes. It's, it's, it's the Meryl Streep movie, and yes. which is Wild River with Kevin Bacon. You should oh, look at like, that yeah. before you go. No good movie. Don't watch Deliverance. You won't want to go. Ooh, so, maybe not. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do a little yep. banjo practice before you do that one. Yeah, Cam and I are the only ones who've seen Deliverance. For those who haven't seen it, it's a very uh, rough romantic comedy. And Ed, you might you might agree with this. I think it's Burt Reynolds' best performance. Easy. Uh, it's, yeah. And it's when Burt had to, he was like, he's handsome and he can play an athlete because he couldn't, no, all the other people in LA, as you know, Cam, they're too small. They can't play athletes. That's why athlete uh, Aussies do so well over there. So mm-hmm. he was like a man and they were like, right. And he said, nope, it's time to do some acting. And then he, boom, this was the one that made them go, oh, okay, I guess he can act as well. Yeah. I love that. Oh, let's, yeah. do an, let's do our own podcast about Burt Reynolds' best performances. That's a fun, <laughs> that's a f- <laughs> Any which way you can, mate. <laughs> oh, Amazing. Amazing. Hey, um, tell us about Ed. T- tell us about the farting book you wrote with Arnold. Thank oh, you yeah, so much for funny. asking. So, <laughs> as you know, you get to a certain point in your career, and they lock you in a room, and they say, "Right, I'm sorry, but you now have to write a fart book for children." And you just you just accept that. You <laughs> just ex- so true. It's like 1984. You know, you just have to accept their terms. And so you say <laughs> yes, 
And so we'd written a book called First Time for Everything about a first year of a, a kid's life. And we'd put our heart, you know, we really tried and I really way tried. too hard. We tried, we tried so way too hard, hard and no one cared. No one cared. We, look, no. It did great and it's still available yeah. in all good bargain bins, but no one cared. And so then I, so then Hamish Blake and Husey both released fart books within about an hour of each other. <laughs> and I said, as a piss take to the publisher, can I do one? I'll have it ready this afternoon. And they said, no worries. And then I thought, oh, here's a bit of a gag. So I said to the publisher, I'm unhappy with my current creative partnership with my wife. <laughs> I, found, I found a new writing partner. His name's Arnold and he's four years old. So I recorded, I've still got the recording. Actually, I'll see if I can find it. I've got the recording of Arnie laying out to me, four years old. What, the outline. Yeah, what he'd like in a farts no. book. Oh, I yeah. Think get that. So then... It's official because my joke is always these celebrity uh, fart books are so, are so simple. Any four-year-old could write them. Yeah. And in order to prove that, I got a four-year-old to write one. And so, <laughs> but accidentally, Cam, he did a great job. And he's, because his humor he is- He got the, a sequel. Yeah. He, he, we've, got two, we've got two sequels coming out. He's like the Avengers. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> while, while Ed's pulling that audio up, Tiff, got tell it. us about your podcast. Yeah. I'm so excited. I've got a podcast called Bounce Forward and it's just about easy, simple tips, hacks, do's and don'ts in health and fitness, interviewing some really cool people um, and just trying to help you live your healthiest life but really simplifying it. So, But also, Tiff, let you, this is where Tiff, Tiff's one, one, if I could give you one note, Tiff, yes, um, please. is that Tiff's <laughs> self-promotion is not a... It's not her default position. So this is based on Bounce Forward. So when Tiff uh, first... Uh, when Tiff had our, had our children, obviously there's a lot of bounce back narrative there, but she said, no, I'm going to bounce forward. And she was yep. very honest about the way that she was going yeah. to not go try and go yeah. back to being the same person, but mm. to... Bouncing forward. And it was, it was like I was getting emails and requests to be on the cover of magazines in my pre-baby body and I hadn't even left the hospital with my son yet. So it was it was crazy and everyone was... I had put on a lot of weight, like 30 kilos or something, but everyone was asking me, are, are you worried that you go, you're not going to bounce back? Are you worried that your fit body has gone? And it was just such pressure that I thought, nah, I'm, I, I can't buy into that. I've got to look after this baby. I've got to look after my own mental health. So I'm not going to bounce back. Yeah. And and, so if, uh, and thank you for, for being the voice of that as well, Tiff, because oh, you, you helped you. a lot of women out there that were, A, following you already and felt like they could they were never going to get a bounce back body. And there you were being yeah. so vulnerable and honest about your own challenges. And we saw you post baby, you know, still with a baby looking like what every yeah, other normal looking, woman's body like, looks like. A- Belly yeah. still, and it was all new yeah. for me too. I was, you know, mm. I had a three month old baby, and I still looked pregnant. And I'm like, really? Yep. This yep. is taking ages. I just didn't. But it, it, you know, you get fit again. It just took me a long time. It took me a year, and um, you know, it it does take time. Nine months in, nine months out. But my podcast yeah. Bounce Forward sort of evolved into being not just about um bouncing forward after having a baby, but also bouncing forward after any kind of personal setback. So, yep. you know, people bouncing forward after injuries or um, disappointments or just like a mindset thing of trying to accept where you're at and be kind to yourself in that moment. Uh, asking for a friend, have you got any bounce forward tips for menopausal women who've put on a huge amount of weight? <laughs> Menopause. Oh my goodness. I loved you in The Truth About Menopause. I watched that. It was so good. It was so good. And menopause is so tough with all the hormones and everything. And it's something that I'm really looking into and going to investigate a lot because it affects so many women. And often it's a... it's something that isn't talked about a lot and, mm, and yeah. it's sort of forgot, you know, just neglected. And I think that there's a real, you know, we need a voice on that too. So thank you. Thank you for, for being that voice, you know. Oh, it's been thank amazing. You. Thanks, Tiff. Yeah. Thank you. So I, if I could talk Tiff up for a moment. So this, uh, this podcast and the way that she – so Tiff spends uh, through her TXO life, her, mm. her program, Tiff knows all aspects of uh, the – health and fitness because she has done the she did the biggest loser thing and she has some thoughts about that which will be coming she's oh. also worked behind the scenes yeah. behind the behind the scenes uh with some very how would i say pressurized 
high profile Hollywood engagement stars. types mm. yeah. as well mm. for this uh, for someone trying to look as, present a certain image of health and not even in a small way try and actually care about whether or not that was the reality of what was taking place. Mm. So mm. I know from just talking to Tiff in the kitchen that that has been a large part of her motivation uh, to be herself because she mm. is uniquely placed in all of those areas to do it. Um, but also to, I know that the effect that, you know, that Tiff has uh, on women through the messages that she that she gets and the way that she'll interact with people and she is... Uh, an intensely honest person with people who who does genuinely care. So uh, I, I'm very uh, I'm very much look, looking forward to hearing uh, how it goes. And um, I am a little bit sick of uh, hearing the rehearsals in the kitchen, but oh, that, I'm not that is my own stuff. Uh, and I, <laughs> the radio producer in I'm me, nervous. does come out sometimes, and I, I say, know. "You, geez, that could sentence could be a bit shorter." Yeah, um, but uh, let's get to the. Uh, he's producing. Uh, let's get to the. Uh, uh, let's get to the ad for uh, Frank Walker's National Tiles a bit quicker, please. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, um, <laughs> Ali, I look forward to you coming on the podcast. Oh, I would love to have you While Cam on. and I are doing a Burt Reynolds deep dive in the other room. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, it's all laid out. I see the vision right there. There it is. I'm loving that. Hey, mate. Arnie. Ha, 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 Do you want to hear some Arnie? Yes. yes. I was going to say, how'd you go with it? How'd you go with it? What, okay. What's the name of the book? Daddy and his shorts. Daddy and his shorts. Okay. <laughs> I'll write it and what happens in so what daddy and his shorts and what happens to daddy and his shorts you fart in your shorts <laughs> okay so daddy and his shorts so what does daddy do daddy what daddy farted in his shorts and then what happened <laughs> then what happened that's all that's all then what happened to the shorts then they got thrown in the bin. They got thrown in <laughs> right. the bin. So that, sadly, is a true story. So <laughs> a pair, too much protein yeah, for one pair. Yeah, Ed's shorts stink and I chucked them in the bin. <laughs> they stink. New shorts. It was one of those ones where, did you get some on you? Actually, I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you get some on you? So there you go. That's That's us. That's us. There's another one coming. Look, we have a two-minute shower in this bathroom where we do quick answers. I love it. Uh, to wind things up. I'd love to go longer with you, but we'll do the two-minute shower now. If you can both answer the question. Yep. The, uh, the first question is, what is your best quality? Oh, I think, I think uh, being honest. Yep, I'm funny. True that. Yeah, what true. the world needs more of is... I think everyone just self-acceptance. I'll go with mm. people paying attention to what's actually happening to them in real life at that moment. Ooh. In the moment. As opposed to looking at a screen and walking down the road. <laughs> as yeah. Opposed to, as opposed to anything. It's oh, the yeah. God. yeah, I agree. Okay, if you could do something for the first time with your partner, <laughs> what would it be? <sighs> I'm going back to my white water rafting. <laughs> yes, yes, Tim. Stick with your Yay! guns on that. In I'm New gonna, Zealand. I'm going to say an all-you-can-eat Italian buffet. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. Cool. This is this is our new question. It's this is new, new question. Yeah, thanks to Ed Cavalier for that one. Okay, <laughs> last last question. One word to describe each other. Ed is well. He is hilarious, but I'm going to go with. Super duper kind. Uh, I'm going to go with honest and with an asterisk of caring. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's Guys, beautiful. it's been a wonderful, uh, it's been a great chat. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> coming into the bathroom oh, with us. And, and thank good you luck with us. the next book and, and also the... Uh, and the podcast, Tiff. Oh, Bounce forward. Thank you. Bounce forward. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, thank you. Thank you both for having us. I'm obliged to plug. Have you been paying attention on the 10 network uh, and my radio commitments, which are banned in this forum? <laughs> 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 we'll consider it done. <laughs> Thanks thank so you. much, you two. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Oh, gosh, that was so much fun. My cheeks are sore from laughing so much. They're great. Imagine being, imagine being their child.
and the yeah. funny, the fun that would emanate from that. I know that household. Plus, you've got the taekwondo and the grandparents and what a legacy! You know, what a what a great thing to be to to be exposed to. Yeah, yeah. With Tiffany and Ed. Oh, that was so fun. I hope you enjoyed the chat. <laughs> I can't wait to listen to her podcast because she's, yep. I've, you know, in looking at her Instagram, she really has a lot of care and kindness about what she's putting out into the world. So I'm sure the podcast is going to be a lot of that as well. A lot mm. of help. Mm. I want to go and find uh, Arnie's book because it's a pretty, pretty great achievement to be published at age four. It's also right up your alley. I wasn't going to say that, but uh, <laughs> yes, me and my lepetamine um, <laughs> obsession, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Scatological humour for Cameron Dado. <laughs> There's nothing funnier. <laughs> well, there are a few things funny, but it's right up there. All right. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did.